We're still in New York as Brianna decides to confront the crew for talking sh behind her back. Rob readies his first solo headlining performance and comedy show. And the fellas can't seem to see eye to eye. What's good, y'all? It's your good sis, Erica Vane, coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another Sweet Life LA video. And in this video, we're going to be breaking down season two, episode number five. Sweet Life premieres new episodes every Thursday on HBO Max. Multiple episodes drop. Um, this week, three episodes have dropped, five, six, and seven. And you can hit the subscribe button, turn on the notifications, so you don't miss out when I break down each of those videos. I also have the Sweet Life playlist if you missed any of my previous breakdowns. So you can go ahead and check that out as well. I hope that you are enjoying the show. If you found my video, go ahead and watch it because there is going to be spoilers. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So the episode opens with Brianna, very emotional after Becky sat on that damn stoop and told her that everybody was talking about her because she was being a diva and she was being a bit when she was talking to Miami about the rooms and I it needed to be said because it was a truth it was a conversation that happened but also I felt like Becky put a little extra of like what she had been feeling with Brie on it so it made it seem worse than what it is and then Brie took that on top of the fact that she did tell us either last episode or the episode before that she was on her period so she took that she took what Becky said. She took a period in her hormones and l just let it rip. And I was just like, girl, it is not that damn serious. They said that you were a little bit snarky. You were a little bit mean and how you delivered it. And also you have to take into consideration who you were actually talking to. They are right. Y'all have had beef with Miami. Y'all have had issues with Miami. So whether you feel like it's walking on eggshells or whether you feel like it's doing too much, Y'all should be considerate when it comes to her, especially given the fact that y'all are in a house that she organized for y'all to stay in for free. Like there's nothing to give a little bit more consideration so that you are welcoming this person and showing that y'all have all turned over a new leaf and y'all are all really cool. Now, granted, you did not have any negative intentions towards Miami. You were not trying to be snarky or whatever, but you were basically talking to her like she was already one of the girls and she don't know you like that. You don't know her like that. They don't know you like, they like y'all group is just not like that yet and that should be fine like when candace said girl we didn't tell you because we were trying to avoid this i was literally thinking it's like girl you're mad because they didn't tell you but then look at what happens when somebody actually tells you it's been all of maybe 12 hours girl like you didn't even give them time to do it and it's like oh but y'all talking about me behind my back well weren't you just talking about thailand to amanda at becky's Ain't that behind her back? And how you felt like she was so dead wrong and this, that, that, that. Like, girl, cut it the hell out. Really, Brianna, cut it the hell out. Last episode, you was putting bros before the hoes. This week's episode, you crying about people talking about you, about some sh that you actually did do and you, you weren't familiar with. Just take it. Take it on the chin. If you really cared that much and you wanted to make an adjustment, then you would not be bawling crying right now. You wouldn't be getting so overly emotional and you would be listening. When Ty said that this is low-key manipulative, I'm glad that she damn said it. And even when she said that in the moment, you got defensive before actually even listening. So like, girl, what about your actions? What about your demeanor is showing that you actually will be receptive if somebody wants to provide cre corrective criticism in the moment? This is exhausting and it's giving so much immature. I was so excited to see Brianna this season and seeing that she seem to be at a, in a more grounded place her business is doing well she seems you know more confident um and just moving in the right direction and this the start of this episode i was like oh no baby is still very much so immature oh my oh my word okay that's what we doing all right all right all right i mean i still you know love rihanna as a character and i enjoy watching her on screen but this first scene i was just like oh my god the drama of it all and y'all be clear i do understand that they have to do certain things for reality tv that's quite a bit and this is also why i don't particularly enjoy breaking down reality tv because i know that i'm talking about a specific human being that is literally walking this earth right now and probably watching the things that they have been recorded doing and edited and shown and and regretting it right and then now i'm on here calling it out again so i'm very much so aware of it i'm not doing it from a place to try to be malicious or anything but just to talk about some of the things and how i feel about them but then also um hopefully with the 
the goal or the reception of like we can all learn from these people and how they're displaying their lives and how they're going through life and what we see on the show and going back to my original point with that said i'm aware that there are certain things that they do specifically for reality tv so i'm aware that this was amped up but the core of it is girl you were being overly dramatic and you should have just took the feedback and came and apologized solo to miami maybe had a conversation with thailand separate like i would love for you to be able to say this to me moving forward in the future that would have actually been able to convince somebody that you would have been open to in the moment and been able to handle it because if this would have been me and this is how you responded that would have been the first thing to tell me oh yeah no if i do have something i still won't tell you because i i can't do all of this i can't do all of this and we are in town for 48 to 72 hours for my damn event meanwhile you bawling your goddamn eyes out about me saying that you said something too harsh no um i want to make a real quick note though speaking about like understanding and knowing this is a reality tv show so at the end they show clips of like them from like maybe even snapchat or social or whatever little behind the scenes that they record on their phones it's so interesting because i was reminded of like how this is just reality tv and some of it is very much so staged because everybody rode to ty's event together but then you get to see everybody entering separately there was a little beat where they were like oh well um, Brianna was the last one to arrive and she's arriving with Pateri and one of um, Becky's suitors who we're going to talk about and I was just like but didn't they ride together and then I get the confirmation later I'm like oh this is also stage just so it's going to look better so I'm also clear about that but <sighs> child they're talking about people okay let me actually put this as well because I did not like Becky's outfit and this is again also why I don't really love talking about reality TV because I'm talking about something that Becky put on thinking that it was really fire and she looked she looked pretty she's a pretty girl but the the outfit I was just like what in the hell does she have on does she go through a shredder like what is actually what is this I don't know but everybody else whoo Thailand yes yes dripped in pearls for the girls, yes. Brianna, yes. Give me metallic uh, corset realness off the shoulder. Little collar moment for a little dainty uh, brushing up against this harsh metal. Giving me mixed textures and a 1990s flip that looked gorgeous. You and Pateri match so well. Like, looked so great together. Amanda, yes, ma'am. Miami, mm we're gonna talk about Miami because I'm I'm really I'm at a loss for her in this episode but we're gonna circle back to her I like what Candace had on as well but the two for me well the number one where I was just like not feeling it was Becky and then um Miami I was like okay girl you kind of look okay but also why are you sitting this way a bunch of little little nitpicky things anywho Thailand's event goes off without a hitch. CJ Wallace comes and she's able to parlay and pitch House Party Creative as a potential experiential partner nationwide with him and his organizations, which is going to be a good look. It's really dope to see these moments of these women bossing up. So watching her and Amanda like really spit that game and, you know, talk that talk about her business and what she can bring to the table, I thought was really, really, really dope. And I'm glad that the event went really well. While the event is happening, Becky is auditioning her two suitors that she decided to invite that both show up. Brianna is trying to deal with her damn uh, wardrobe malfunction because as soon as she gets there, her strap, her one strap for this metallic corset or this metal corset pops. And then Pateri says that he was looking for her. She's saying he wasn't looking this whole time. So we don't get tons of Pateri and Brianna vibes, even though I need more. And also, y'all, I just want to make this one note. Pateri had this moment where he brought her in close because it was very windy out on the balcony where they went to go look at the city. And he leaned down, he was hugging her. And for the first time ever, he looked like a boy y'all and I was like no not my sweet Pateri I've been rooting for you but she was a player nigga you is a player I'm gonna bring up the specific moment on screen right now so that y'all can see it I still love them together I still love how they look but Pateri is in his damn element in NYC in this episode I was like oh no he really is a Harlem nigga like oh I okay I got you Pateri I see how you moving I I don't know if this is going to wind up working between Brianna and Pateri, but I love the idea of him and I feel like he's the least goofiest of the like non main character guys because lord them and them keeping this damn market still on 
I don't understand it. Every time I look at him, I think about that horrible ass day and how thirsty he was at Brianna's event, but I'm not going to spend too much time on old boy. Moving on. Let's go to Becky and her bachelor rats impromptu situation with Kyle and Dimples. Child, Kyle, Dimples is her type. Kyle will be a stretch. He's more intentional. He's marriage minded. And she's trying to figure out if that's a turn on, or if it's a turn off. And she's also trying to figure out if she's going to fall for what, what Dimples is putting down. And I was just like, God damn it, the audacity. She literally invited these two men there. And then I don't know if she did this or the producers did this, but sat these two down to talk to her at the same time. I'm so glad Dimples was like, well, I kind of feel like this is an interview between me and my homeboy. I'm glad you said it because it is. Like, I was just like, why in the hell are y'all even participating in this? Do y'all want this girl that bad? Really? And Becky girl, what are you saying? Cause she's talking about, I just want to walk into being the woman that I just know I'm supposed to be. What is that? What does she look like? What does she sound like? What does she want, honey? Because you speaking in these damn metaphors and Instagram quotes and I'm just sitting here looking like, mama, go, go recollect yourself and come back. Get it together, Becky. <laughs> I want to, I gotta look these people up because I want to know how old they are. I know they're not like, early 20s like 21 but i know they're also not like 28 29 or maybe they are i don't know i feel like that will provide a lot more context into why they're moving the way they're moving why they talk the way that they talk and some of the decisions that they're making and specifically mindsets it's interesting for legacy table amanda gave up the opportunity to be there for rob's first solo show and honestly, I'm glad that she did. Watching her in her element and watching her pull this together and really support Ty in this way and stand 10 toes down, not only in support of her friend, but also in support of herself and her business as she is the PR partner for House Party Creative. It was a good look. And Rob still killed it. The show was kind of small and that's no shade to him, but like this, this was a good decision for her and I pray that he doesn't hold on to the fact that she didn't come to this particular show and realize that you know they're moving in together you about to quit your job like she's gonna support you plenty and has supported you plenty I'm pretty sure like you moved to LA from Chicago I moved from Baltimore to LA that is no small feat and it 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 really requires help a lot of times so I know that she's been there supporting you prior to like let's not make this a whole thing like he has a beat where he talks to PJ like oh I wish that Amanda was here. I'm just hoping that this doesn't like carry on into other episodes because for the most part, Rob and Amanda seem very, very solid. And if he's planning to quit his job and pursue entertainment in the way that he is, he needs to not be making enemies in his household, but really fighting, you know, the things out in in pursuit of his goal. Like the things that's going to come up against you out there that are roadblocks and all that, fight that. Give Amanda grace, give Amanda credit and um yes communicate your needs but also be mindful of what are real needs and what are wants and when you can't get the wants that has to be okay as well but let's go ahead and talk about the the comedy show it seemed like we only got a snippet of it it seems like rob is actually really funny and he knocks the show out the park everybody shows up child i just get annoyed watching gerald talk so i'm praying that this season he does some type of redemptive turnaround he realizes something he apologizes for something because this man just literally sits like his shit don't stink he walks like his shit don't stink he talks like his shit don't stink and i'm just like sir no oh cheryl i didn't even mention cheryl cheryl looks great cheryl always looks great let me go back real quick to legacy table cheryl's outfit was fly as fuck too but she designed it so we already knew it was going to be on point cheryl is really kind of playing the background in this season so she's not really doing too much she's really like she was talking to miami um back in new york at the legacy table event and oh let me talk about miami too before i go over to the guys miami's talking about she'll take whatever guy becky don't want why why are you Allowing yourself to be painted as this thought pocket, thirsty, with the shits girl. Because they don't, maybe this is her though. Maybe it is. And if that is you and that's how you identify, by all means. However, I just don't understand. Like when she said that she'll take whatever man Becky don't want. I was like, wasn't there 17 other niggas at this party? Like girl, there's, why are you waiting for her to decide? so that you can see who you're gonna pursue. Meanwhile, they're both pursuing her, so they're not pursuing you. Like, make it make sense. That to me is giving insecure. And she's framing it in a way of like, 
oh yeah cuz I'm that girl and I don't I don't guess like I need to know and I'll do this I do what I want clearly if you wanted either one of them then you should have gone after one of them versus sitting here waiting to see which one Becky don't want like it's it's giving I know I'm number two number three maybe even num number damn four and I'm okay with it but I'm gonna try to play confident in it and I hate that for her like I really do hate it I hate this I'm glad that her and Becky have like squashed their beef or whatever because I hated how she looked and like always popping off and I'm just like girl like let Becky be the mean girl because you literally did nothing wrong. You just showed up. You could just sit here and be be pretty, be fun. Clearly, you like to drink. You might be might have to work on it because all you want to do is drink every time y'all do anything. But that's neither here nor there. I'm not talking about that. Like, I am praying that throughout the rest of the season, they don't just have um, Miami position as the, like... Oh, fun girl with no real substance. I think that she had a real dope conversation with Becky and she was able to even support Becky while they were trying to hash out their own issues, which showed a lot of maturity. So to see her and then even like get into New York and like not fighting over the rooms and, and being like, you know what? It's not that deep. Like, I don't care. I'm gonna go with the flow type of girl. Okay, cool. I didn't, I just did not like the positioning of her being like, I'm gonna take whoever she don't have or don't want. And I'm like, girl, it was literally 17 other niggas in here and your whole titties was out. I promise you, you could have found somebody, you could have picked somebody else instead of waiting on this. Like, why didn't you invite any of them to the party for yourself? Because this looks thirsty, like terribly thirsty and not in any kind of a good way. And I hate that for you. And I wish that Cheryl would say that, but Cheryl ain't that type. So now back to the fellas. Rob's, um... Rob's comedy show goes amazingly well. Everybody has a good time. Everybody's laughing. I chuckle. We got a little bit of the jokes. We didn't get to hear all of it, but it was funny. And then at the end, he takes his opportunity to try to patch things up with PJ or get PJ and Jalen to patch things up. When I tell you, I was losing respect for Jalen by the second in the scene. Aside from PJ saying, you don't follow me on Instagram, man. It's personal. I was like, that's whack as fuck. I don't have to follow you on Instagram, sir. Like, what are we even talking about? That's the one thing I had a problem with PJ saying. Everything else, I was like, Jalen, this shit is on you because what are you even talking about? One, you keep telling him not to interrupt you, but you keep making these dramatic ass pauses so nobody can even tell when you done speaking or when you're not. And then you come into it to me really really fraudulently because you literally talk to the old heads and your homies about how you might have been out of pocket and you came at him kind of crazy and yeah you'll take accountability for this but this is how you were feeling meanwhile that particular part of accountability is completely missing in this whole damn conversation like you should have led with that you should have led with yeah i didn't have to take it to this next level but i felt like you tried me in this way this way and this way you were literally talking all around the damn topic not making no damn sense blaming pj for every damn thing meanwhile you are definitely responsible as well and it felt very much so like the conversation that she was having with Thailand talking about it was her fault that she went to a 10 that's not her your reaction is not her fault has she hit you in the mouth maybe had PJ hit you in the mouth maybe you tried to rock this nigga socks off that's not his fault bro you took what he said as disrespect you took what he said or what he was doing as a trigger to you okay cool but take some accountability for yourself and how you chose to respond in this moment like i really felt like Jalen was a real but now it's giving clownery and then to top it all off when i was completely done i'm so glad that they cut the episode at this point because i was completely done when he said yeah it's real funny how you and rob are cool but we used to talk shit about you i was like what in the goofy ass facebook gossip is this so now you about to pull Rob in, mess up his damn night just to tell, tell him, yeah, your new business manager or whatever the hell you got going on. We was talking shit about you. So I don't understand how he cool, how he cool with you. What does that have to do with the price of tea in China, Jalen? What does that have to do with you trying to knock PJ's head off his shoulders at the damn Body by Brie event? What the hell do it got to do with anything? The same way that yesterday's price ain't today's price, whatever the hell was going on yesterday, it clearly ain't what's going on with today. And you and Rob haven't even been on the same page for a while because he sat across from the table from you back in episode three and wasn't really feeling what you was putting down, but was really gracious about it because you was barely taking accountability for what was going on, talking about some, yeah, you don't rock with this, you don't rock with that about him. So like, boy, what are you talking about? 
And I'm so annoyed because I literally, y'all can go back to my previous videos. I'm like, yeah, Jalen, the real one. Jalen, the real one. All right, I don't necessarily agree with him about this particular part, but he's still a real one. In this episode, I ain't got it. I'm going to go ahead and step aside because I don't know if it's the editing or if it's, this is really how you are. But this that happened is not cool. And you need to be accountable for it the same way that you want to hold other people accountable. PJ, I commend you for what you're going through emotionally and within your family and how you are showing up for some of the men in these in this group and then still taking lashes the way that you are from verbally from them women and then now almost physically and now verbally from Jalen. It's too much. And you better than me because I've been cussing everybody the hell out. Period. And yeah, go. That's my breakdown for episode five of season two of Sweet Life LA. Let me know your thoughts on the episode in the comment section down below. I cannot wait to read them. That's how we keep the conversation going. Um, I'm enjoying it. I also am super, super, super obsessed with the intro to this song. I mean, to this show. Like, their intro sequence is fire. And I find that I really do be falling in love with really great intros that have me hooked on the show as well. Um, so I'm enjoying, I don't do a ton of reality TV breakdowns, but I'm enjoying talking about this one with you guys. Y'all have watched my first few videos and have started to get feedback and I'm glad that y'all are enjoying the show. I'm hoping that more people find this show because while this is still a reality TV show, so there's still those certain reality TV tropes, I do feel like this is a show that is done well and with season two, it has elevated and it has gotten better and it needs to be seen. So share. Tell people that you're watching Sweet Life LA. Tweet about it, Instagram about it, TikTok about it. And then also be sure to post a comment in my comment section about it so that we can keep our conversations going. And I will see you in the next video.